Hey, homies, allow me to introduce to you to the magnificent Emily du Chatelet. <clears throat> Emily was a French natural philosopher and mathematician from the early 1730s until her death due to complications during childbirth in 1749. Her most recognized achievement is her translation of and commentary on Isaac Newton's 1687 book, Principia, containing the basic laws of physics. The translation, published posthumously in 1756, is still considered the standard French translation, which means she set the baseline for all French translations. I haven't never really set the baseline for any kind of translation. I don't even set a good base now as like a role model or scientific figure. Her commentary includes a contribution to Newtonian mechanics, or the postulate of an additional conservation law for total energy, of which kinetic energy of motion is one element. This led to her conceptualization of energy as such and to derive its quantitative relationship to the mass and velocity of an object. Her philosophical magnum opus, Institutions de Physique, circulated widely generated heated debates and was republished and translated into several other languages within two years of its original publication. Which means this young lady published something and people got mad. Who knew women publishing or really women existing? W women doing anything would make anyone angry. Who, whoever would have thought of such a thing? <laughs> I kid, obviously. I love you, Brandy. Don't kill me. Um, she participated in the famous Vis Viva debate concerning the best way to measure the force of a body and the best means of thinking about conservation principles. Posthumously, her ideas were heavily represented in the most famous text of the French Enlightenment, the Encyclopedia of Denis Dorot and G. Laurent, first published shortly after Châtelet's death. Numerous biographies, books, and plays have been written about her life and work in the two centuries since her death. In the early 21st century, her life and ideas have generated renewed interest in physics. In addition to producing famous translations of works by authors such as Bernard Mandelbaum and Isaac Newton, Du Chatelet wrote a number of significant philosophical essays, letters, and books that were well known in her time. Because of her well-known collaboration and romantic involvement with Voltaire, which spanned much of her adult life, for generations, Emily has been known as the mistress and collaborator to her much better known intellectual companion. Her accomplishments and achievements have often been subsumed under his and as a result, even today, she is often mentioned only within the context of Voltaire's life and work during the period of the early French Enlightenment. The ideals of her works spread from the ideals of individual empowerment to issues of the social contract. Recently, however, professional philosophers and historians have transformed the reception of her work. Historical evidence indicates that Emily's work had a very significant influence on the philosophical and scientific conversations of the 1730s and 1740s. In fact, she was famous and respected by many of the greatest thinkers of her time. Emily corresponded with renowned mathematicians such as Johann Bernoulli, Leonard Euler, early developers of calculus. She was also tutored by Bernoulli's prodigy students, as well as being one of the idols of Frederick the Great of Prussia, who refounded the Academy of Sciences in Berlin, who admired her and looked up to her while corresponding with both her and Voltaire regularly. He introduced Emily to Leibniz philosophy by sending her the works of Christian Wolff, and Emily sent him a copy of her institutions. Her works were published and republished in Paris, London, and Amsterdam. They were translated into German and Italian, and they were discussed in most of the important scholarly journals of the era. Perhaps most intriguingly, many of her ideas were represented in various sections of 
the encyclopedia of the dot and some of the articles in the encyclopedia are a direct copy of her work. In her writing, Du Chatelet criticizes Jean Locke's philosophy. She emphasizes the necessity of the verification of knowledge through experience. Her critique on Locke originates in her Bernard de Mandeville commentary on the fable of the bees. She confronts us with her resolute statement in favor of the universal principles which precondition human knowledge and action and maintains that this kind of law is innate. She claims the necessity of a universal presupposition because if there is no such beginning, all our knowledge is relative. In that way, Du Chatelet rejects John Locke's aversion of innate ideas and prior principles. She also reverses Locke's negation of the principle of contradiction, which would constitute the basis of her methodic reflections in the institutions. On the contrary, she affirms her arguments in favor of the necessity of prior and universal principles. Two and two could then make as well four as six if prior principles did not exist. In her first independent work, the preface to her translation of The Fable of Bees, Du Chatelet argues strongly for women's education, particularly a strong secondary education, as was available for young men in French colleges. By denying women a good education, she argues, society prevents women from becoming eminent in the arts and sciences. Du Chatelet made a crucial scientific contribution in making Newton's historic work more accessible in a timely, accurate, and insightful French translation. Augmented by her own original concept of energy conservation. A main belt minor planet and crater on Venus have been named in her honor. And she is the subject of three plays. Legacy of Light by Karen Zacharias. Emily La Marquis du Chatelet defends her life tonight by Lauren Gunderson. And Urania, the life of Emily du Chatelet by Jill Bonagru. The opera Emily of Kajia is about the last moment of her life. Emily is often represented in portraits with mathematical iconography, such as holding a pair of dividers or a page of geometrical calculations. In the early 19th century, a French pamphlet of celebrated women introduced a possible backstory to Emily's childhood. According to this story, a servant fashioned a doll for her by dressing up wooden dividers as a doll. However, Emily undressed the dividers and, surmising their purpose, made a circle with them. Since 2016, the French Society of Physics has awarded the Emily du Chatelet Prize to a physicist or team of researchers for excellence in physics. Duke University also presents an annual du Chatelet Prize in philosophy of physics for previously unpublished work in philosophy of physics by a graduate student or junior scholar. So Emily du Chatelet, we thank you for your contributions to philosophy and physics, as well as making Newton's work more accessible to people. Thank you. All right, homies, that's it for today. Be safe. Take care. I'll catch you on the next one.